In this paperless principles session, we'll be looking at different ways in which we can become paperless, or at the very minimum, how we can paper less, both in lectures with students and in meetings. We'll look at the tools that will help us to become increasingly paperless and the ways in which we can achieve this using cloud services, and also be clear when it is appropriate not to use paper and the times when we might need to use paper. On the screen are the five priorities identified by FST as key indicators of success as part of this mobile learning project. In this session we will be using some apps and we have already covered their usage. If this is the case we can point you back to videos that are available in the FST Mobile Learning YouTube channel. But there are also some new apps. There are video conferencing apps including FaceTime. And we will be exploring some cloud services which have the potential for documents stored in the cloud and the potential for collaboration. The session is divided into three main areas. First of all, how we can use our iPad to help us organize meetings, how we can work with documents on our iPad, and how we can use the iPad to gather feedback within a meeting, for example. As always, each session is driven by an essential question. And here is the essential question for our session today. How are you currently paperless or paperless and what are the benefits? On the screen is a list of ways in which people have identified they already use alternatives to paper. Documents can obviously be emailed in advance to people attending meetings. Maybe you don't actually need to meet face to face, where you could have a meeting via audio using the phone or have a conference call, either audio or video. The agenda for a meeting could be emailed in advance as a document electronically. The notes within a meeting could be taken electronically. If these notes were taken electronically using a laptop or an iPad, there are distinct advantages in saving time, which will come to shortly. A distinction needs to be made between informal documents and documents which may well be of a more confidential nature because different university rules will then apply. Technology clearly offers us many advantages and as technology evolves we may well find ourselves reconsidering the way in which we use technology to achieve everyday tasks. We can certainly email documents and the advantage is the sheer speed and the familiarity with which we can carry out operations such as this. Using technology means that we have speed at our disposal as well. 
When we use digital alternatives to paper, there is an advantage in terms of reduction of cost, and also a saving in terms of reduction of time, which would otherwise be spent creating the paper documents. For each of the detail on the left hand side, there are also distinct disadvantages. If you were to email a group of people a document, you have lots of single copies of that document now electronically, and some people find it difficult to locate the documents within their inboxes or if they file them away. We'll be exploring some of the examples on the left hand side in greater detail throughout this session. As always, we need to consider the advantages and also the potential disadvantages, not just in terms of practicality, but also in terms of time that we need to invest to learn new ways of carrying out everyday routines. It is worth considering the SAMA model when we're talking about paperless principles. There are tools that we can use which are simply mere substitution. We could use our iPad to invite people to a meeting in the same way that we use a computer. That's mere substitution. We need to consider augmentation, that somehow using the mobile devices we now have, there is an improvement in the way we work. Before we start considering the ways in which we can modify how we actually work. With knowledge, skills and understanding in place, and a clear vision driving us forward, we can then consider how to redefine the way we work on an everyday basis. When you're ready, feel free to watch the next video in this series where we will be looking at ways in which we can use mobile technology to organise meetings.